welcome to practice. I'm Dave, this is my living room, we're at home today. The sun's out for a change, so it's a nice change. And we have a 30 minute class on the clock, ready to go. So I invite you to come, if you're not already standing, come to a standing position, hip width with the feet, something that feels balanced between all the corners of your feet, bit of stability, noticing are you in your arches, are you sinking in, can you bring a bit of brightness to the quads as the kneecaps lift a little bit? Maybe a little bit of awareness into the, your hips, a sense of what you're feeling in your hips today. Have you got your dancing hips on or have you just crawled out of bed and you're feeling a little bit worse for wear? And we're going to start just with a little bit of moving meditation or a bit of Tai Chi. And that's just to bring a connection from the mind to the breath to the body. So. I invite you to bring your fingertips to your sternum and give it a little pitter patter. Like if you've been watching rain fall into puddles lately, and you can notice the rippling effect. So with the elbows up high and the, the chest tall, a bit of brightness, sense of pride in the chest. In the inhalation, the arms expand wide as the belly inflates like a balloon. And the ribs inflate and the chest even lifts a little bit more to get that little bit more space in there. Exhalation sees the arms wrapping in like you're coming in for the world's best hug or like a bird going into attack mode as it pulls its wings in to dive in. Inhale. Space between the collarbones as we fill the belly up with air. And then letting that simmer on the exhale, slowly pressing the air out. A couple more like that in your own time. In inhalation, you feel the belly expand, the side ribs, and then the chest. And then on the exhale, our fingers paint horizontally like a paintbrush on a canvas as the exhalation and its final movement as the belly contracts in a little bit towards the spine. Two more like that. I'm going to invite you while you're doing this to mindfully check in with yourself today. How are you feeling? And just something that I'd like to touch upon is I've noticed and it's, it's no big revelation is that the word busy is a reoccurring theme in people's lives. And I think that busy is just a blanket term. It's a blanket term to hide the true emotion of how we're feeling. Because busy is not an emotion. It's not a true form of how you are feeling. It's merely a statement of attainment or achievement. So in today's class, if you set aside your 30 minutes, I invite you to drop everything, touch in with yourself right now and how you are in this exact moment. And at the end of the class, we'll check in again, just to see if anything's changed, anything's shifted. So drop the hands down, both arms can rise overhead. Grab your wrist, doesn't matter which side, we're gonna get to that side body stretch. Feet still hip width distance apart. I'm elongating through my wrist. I'm actually using my other hand to pull it up. And at the same time, spiraling my chest to the sky. Feeling my ribs expand like an accordion player. Breathe into them there. Exhale back to the center. Swap the wrists over. Reaching over the other way. Finding that side body stretch. Feeling the ribs gently part as that body grows longer through the side. Back to the center on the exhale. This time we can take it a little bit further so our hands can separate and we can actually push our hip out to the side. So for me, I'm pushing my right hip out to the side and both hands leaning, finding a little bit more once again, looking to spiral the chest up instead of hunching over to the side. Easy breathing here, don't hold your breath. 
We're above the water. Don't need to hold your breath. Exhale, we come back up. Sorry, inhale, we come back up. And exhale, we fall to the other side. And check in with your breathing today. That's usually a key indicator of how you're feeling. If you can tap into that. Is it heavy? Is it coming out of my mouth? Maybe I'm a little bit congested. Inhale, back up. Spine nice and long, let the arms come down. Something a little bit different now. If you're a desk jockey like me, this is gonna be sensational for your lower back. So palms out in front of you like your dinner tray. If you ever had a cafeteria or a tuck shop or a canteen back in the day. And from here, following it, I'm gonna to go to my left, which would be your right, spiraling around, the back foot pivots, and we're just finding a little bit of um, low back stretch. Back to the center, and then we turn the other way. My back left foot's turning, rotating, but my right foot is staying planted. Almost like I'm trying to check out what's behind me, or like I'm winding up to throw something the furthest I've ever thrown it before. A couple more each side. Feeling some stretch in the lower back here and the hip flexors, getting them active. Back to center. And it's important to pause on the back of it and just play with it. Maybe bending the knees a little bit, finding a little bit more in the hips. A little bit more juice in the hips, coming back to the center. Don't need to accelerate into it, using some control. Back to the center. Wonderful. Clasp the hands behind the back. Pull the shoulder, back, shoulder blades back. Broaden through the collarbones. Just feel this passive stretch for a second. Generation Texter. This is the perfect or generation computer. Just like me, desk jockey. This is the perfect counteraction to all that rounding in the shoulders that sees them being pulled forward. And what I'll do from here is I'm going to bring both my palms touching, drop it on my right hip. I'm going to squeeze my elbows in, and then I'm going to drop my head to the left. And just find a bit of passive neck stretching here. So letting gravity do the work. The head's the heavy part of the body. And if I let it just hang there with this almost like a little bit of an anchor I've created with my hands and my, and my elbows, and I can play around with the different angles of it, not, not um, doing half circles in the neck, but just gentle adjustments to see if I can feel a particular band in my neck that, that is a little bit tighter than the others. Band or string like a guitar. Inhale, gently bring your neck back up. Take the hands away from that right hip. Lengthen down the lower tailbone again, just to bring some brightness to the front of the body. And then plant it on the other side, opposite side. Once again, legs nice and straight, feeling the connection with the ground. And then exhale, lower the neck to the other side. Just check in with your elbows. If the elbow's flaring out a little bit, it does feel like quite a nice front of shoulder stretch, but we're not capitalizing on the full benefits that we can get from that, from this neck range of motion in the neck. So just bringing the elbow and squeezing it in like you're squeezing some bagpipes. Let everything hang out here. Weight of gravity doing the work, a sense of letting go. Inhale, bring the neck back up to center. So hands still clasped and the feet together. I'm gonna to bring my big toes to touch or you can bring your feet fully together. I'm gonna to drag the knuckles 
down the lower back once more, finding this beautiful shoulder opening stretch, front of the body, and then I'm going to dive down and find my first forward fold for the day. As I send my hands that are interlaced overhead, gentle knee bend. If you're one of my hyperextending friends, just checking in to see if you're using your muscles or if you're loading up the joints. Let the neck, neck head hang heavy. You can even give it a little shake side to side, Bollywood style. And choosing the range of motion that works for you. A little bit more juice, you can try and squeeze the palms of your hands together. And then simply break the bind, let the hands come to the lower back, and a bit of self-massage, a bit of self-love, as you slide the hands down the legs as far as they'll go. And curling back up to standing, like a fern, having a new leaf. Arms rise, inhale breath, exhale bring them back like we're going skiing, knees bend, brush the floor, we'll come into our chair pose. Find a sense of broadening through the collarbones, and if you've got tight shoulders like me, it might feel a bit nicer if we bring it into almost this cactus position here, instead of trying to attain the, the full yogi position. <laughs> of squeezing your hands together. Now from this position here, I'm going to step my left foot back and I'm going to find a high lunge. Checking in with my hips, is one hip taking priority, taking the lead over the other, or can I have them straight like car headlights? My hands are open. And then on the exhalation I pulse, the front leg straightens, and I pull it in again like we did at the start in our Tai Chi exercises. Or if you're a full-blown hippie, like me, you're hugging a tree. Inhalation, spread the wings open, knee stacked over the ankle. And exhale, we pulse again. Inhale to open. Exhale, bring it in. One more like that. Inhale as the front knee bends, the chest opens, heart lifts. Really pulling the elbows back. Creating space. Exhale, pull it in. Excellent. We're going to hit our warrior two. So my left leg is ground on the knife edge. So I've turned it out to be about um, parallel with the back of my mat. My front heel can find alignment anywhere along the arch or throughout the, the length of that foot. And it's facing the front of the room. Bending into my knee. Torso lifted, my back hip spiraling forwards, back leg active, front leg active, arms stretched long like a real warrior. Sense of strength. We can just pause here for a second, just check in with ourselves. It's like the pause in music, how essential it is. Because otherwise music would just be clutter. My back hand drops, slides down my back leg. My right hand reaches up and over like a rainbow, not crunching into the side ribs. A sense of elongation through these front ribs. Exhale, I flip it in reverse. My elbow comes to my knee and I reach my top hand up and over. You can see almost a Diagonal position from my fingertips, my top hand, down to the outside pinky edge toe, which is pressing into the mat. Once again, side body stretches, trying to spiral the chest just that little bit to the ceiling. Inhale, coming back up, and we put it in reverse once more. To the back as the arm reaches up and over. Brightness in that side body. Breathing into your gills if you were a fish. That delicious oxygen. And then we put it into our front 
triangle position. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further, hand can come to a block to the floor. The journey is for you to choose. But if not, simply hang out with me here. And if this is not achievable, hang out with me here. Okay, we're going to bring both arms, cartwheel both hands to the floor. We're going to low lunge now, almost like a sprinter in the blocks, but with my back leg strong. And I'm going to pulse to push my front leg straight as my front body melts over the leg. Inhale, my chest lifts. I'm coming forward as my front knee bends back into that runner's lunge, so low lunge. Exhale, pulsing, back of heart lifting, a sense of surrendering. Coming forward once more, find your left hand on the ground, and the right hand spirals up to the sky. I'll show you from this side, left hand planted, and the right hand soars to the sky, broadening through the chest, back into that side body. And we can pulse with that, hand back to the ground, inhale to rise, exhale, sweep it down. One more just like that. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, simmer it down. I'm going to lower my back leg. If you need to pad your knee now, we will be on our knee for a second. So I invite you, you can simply fold your mat over, a bit of extra padding. Grab a towel, grab a blanket, pillow. But when you're ready, come into that hip. Extra juice into that hip. Back toes, tops of the toes pushing in, making contact. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forwards over that front leg, front leg straight. Let the body melt. You might have to readjust your foot here, find, find an angle, and just play with it here. You should be feeling a sense of stretching in the hamstring. I'm feeling it all the way down the back of my leg, into my calf, even into the fascia on the back of my heel. I'm feeling my Achilles tendon very tight today. Coming forwards again. On the inhale breath. And exhale one more time, pushing it back. Melt down. Come forwards. Inhale, lift, broaden, lengthen, reach to the sky. Hands can come to the mat. Take the knee back. We're going to find our first push-up of the day. So we're going to do it on our knees. Ground the hands, spread between the fingers. Body weight shifts forwards. My core switches on. Bend the elbows in close to the side, lowering down. Now we're pressing through the tops of my feet. Kneecaps lift. Lifting through the chest also as the shoulders roll back. Cobra. Exhale, lower down. One more like that. Inhale, lift, and pushing back, we find child's pose, like a sushi roll, we become the sushi roll, coming forwards onto hands and knees, and push back into a crouch position. So a crouch is a little bit different from a squat or a malasana, as my heels are not on the ground, and I'm just pushing back into what range of motion works for me. I'm on my toes, just finding a stretch up in here. And then I ground my hands and I slowly lift through my legs and we find our first downward dog. Just pedal the feet out here. Pedal them out and pause. Have a breath. Walk to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Letting go. Heavy head. Give it a little wiggle. Is there any tension there? Inhale, rolling all the way up. Bent knees. 
stacking the vertebrae on top of each other, one at a time, arms come up, nice and tall, reaching up, and this time we're going to step back and take our left leg back, or the other leg back, bending to the right knee. Open through the arms, find the cactus, and then pulsing it back in. Again, open on the inhale, exhale. Bring on the ground this way. Open through the chest. Exhale, one more for good luck. Open through the chest. And exhale, grounding through the back leg. Hit the parallel pinky toe to the back of the mat, bending into the front leg. Core nice and tall, hip wrapping forwards, ribs staying in, reaching the fingers to the front of the room and stretching to the back of the room. Warrior two. Inhale, sliding the hand down the back leg as we reach up and over. Exhale, arm grounds the knee. Finding that juicy side stretch right through all those side ribs. The accordion or the slinky is at full stretch. And then to get that little bit more stretch, just deepen the breathing out. And then you can find it. Inhale, come back up. Both feet still grounded. My hips haven't changed. I'm only playing with my upper body. Reaching up and over. Like a high jumper doing a Frosby flop. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, crack the side body again. Grounding through that back pinky edge toe. Really push into it. And if you've got a variation, now's your time. You bring the hand to a block down here. Or you can take a bind. As we inhale, we journey back up. We'll crack one more each side. We're coming forwards. From here, I'm going to spiral and carve out my hands to the floor. I'll find a low lunge position. So I bend into my knee. I come forwards first. Back leg active. And then I push through the front leg. Let everything melt down. Moving meditation. Connection with the breath. The inhale. We come forwards and the exhale, pushing backwards. The inhale, we come forwards. Exhale, melting. Scissoring action happening between the feet as my front heel pulls to the back of the mat and my back toes. Sliding to the front of the mat, almost a sense of wanting to create a little mountain in the middle of the mat because I'm sliding it together. Ground the back knee, coming up to our low lunge. Find the stretch in that hip. You can change the angle. You can also find a little bit of side stretch if I crack my arm over to the side. Find length. And let it melt down. Half splits. Body heavy over that front leg. You can readjust it to find an angle or a position that works for you. Coming forward once more. Broaden and lift through the collarbones. Find that hip stretch. Bring it back, both knees meet, and we'll come down to sit on our heels. And from here, we're going to swing our feet out in front of us. We're going to find a forward fold. So if you, once again, if you end up in this position here, bring some padding under your hips, it'll lift you up. When you're ready, 
The inhalation sees us sit up tall, be the best version of ourselves. And the exhale, tracking through the sky, painting the sky, come forwards, grab the feet. You know, if that's not achievable, the hands can just plant gently by the side. Deepen the breath. Heavy body folding over long legs. So we're rolling back up on the inhale now. My hands are coming next to my hips. My feet plant on the ground. And push up through my hips, find a bit of a counter pose. Squeeze through the glutes. Head can drop back if it's so good for the neck. And then plant the hips down. Rolling down as slow as you can, double slow motion. Coming to be all the way onto the ground. And take my right leg and I bring it across so it's parallel to the, well I guess it's 90 degrees to me. I bring my left knee up so this is going to be into a figure four position. I reach up, I grab the back of my hamstring, I grab the back of my knee, and then I pull it in towards me. My head can then lower back down to the ground. I'm feeling a stretch in my glute muscles all on the outside here. If you want to take this a little bit further, if you're a little bit more flexible, maybe dancing background, you can take the right foot, put it into the elbow crease, grab the leg, and take a bind, an S grip. Let the left leg hang long. But for me today, I'm happy with the figure four. Tight glutes, too much sitting down for me. And then we flip it, put it in the other way. So now my left leg comes across, 90 degree angle to me. And I bring my right knee up. That's the support. I reach through this gap here with my hands, me grabbing the shin and pulling it in. Probably hear the magpies in the background. It's that time of year. You're all calling each other, calling out to their friends. One more breath, deep inhalation into the belly. Exhale, let it go. Break the grip, let the legs come out. A little bit of knee swinging from side to side can feel good to lift, um, loosen up out of that hip now. As we find our last stretch of the day, arms go wide, as wide as I can. If you don't have much space, you can cactus the arms. I shuffle my left hip to the right side of my mat, and I'm going to bring my right leg up and over, finding some stretch in that lower back and the outside of the leg. Important here is that you keep both shoulders grounded. You don't want to lose a shoulder off the ground. A little bit of extra juice, bring your left hand on top of that right leg, a bit of passive weight, and even more juice, you can turn your head away from the knee. Reconnect with the rhythm of your breath here. Breath like the ocean rolling up the shoreline as it goes along the shore and then retracts to go back out. Inhale, we tighten the abs a little bit to create support. We bring the knee back and we put it on the other side. So I shuffle my hips to the left side of my mat, I straighten my right leg, my left leg lifts up and over. Connecting my right hand on that 
outside of thigh, a little bit of extra passive weight. I'm not pushing it down, I'm letting my weight of my arm do the work. Inhale, bring the knee up. Straighten both legs out. Take up as much space as you can. Find your Shavasana. Resting pose. Lengthen the back of your neck a little bit longer. Maybe you can take your hair out if it's tied up. Something that will make this the most comfortable you can be right now. Just forgetting about everything and connecting in with the sensation with the floor this time. The texture of your clothing. The way of the heels, the backs of the wrists. Noticing if anything shifted this quick 30 minute class. And if you've got more time up your sleeve, once again, I invite you to pause the video. Shavasana is super beneficial. It is not softening down. Smooth, relax the eyelids, relax the teeth, the tongue. And bring some movement into the fingers and the toes now. Slowly reawakening, fingers and toes scrunching. Arms can reach up overhead. Bring the knees into a tough position. Give them a little sway, a little rocking from side to side. And we're going to come up to a seat a little bit more actively this time as the hands go behind the knees, chin chucks onto chest, a couple of rock and rolls, a bit of an active get up. Come to the mat, find a position that works for you. Eyes can close down, it can be cross legged, can be kneeling. Like we did at the start, bring the fingertips to pitter patter on that sternum bone as the elbows are high. And with this connection to that center part of our body, I invite you to notice how do you feel now? And on inhalation, the belly swells and the arms broaden, they go wide, taking up as much space as you can. And then the exhale, draw it all the way back in, making contact with the sternum. Letting the hands now soften down onto your legs and say, thank you for joining me. Good to see the sun's out and hope to, hope to practice again soon.